the question Trump's pledge to go after enemies if elected, reason to vote against him, 50%. Doesn't make a difference, 26. Reason to vote for him, 24. Yeah, um, you kind of long for the days when the worst thing they said was weird, right? Mm -hmm. now, now they're leaning heavily in these final days into darkness, into, into fascism and all that stuff. And, and like Jackie said earlier, you can kind of see why they're saying the things they're saying, mm -hmm. because it, it is clear that a large swath of the electorate sees that danger, sees that, sees that argument is resonating with them. Yeah, I, I mean, that is a clear example. When 50% of the electorate, these are likely voters, right, mm -hmm. say, uh, because you are promising mm -hmm. to use the office to go after your political enemies, that, that's a no-go for me. Like, that, mm -hmm. that makes you a less attractive candidate. We see it about uh, his demeanor and temperament. We see it about his age. These are negatives on Trump, and it answers the question, well, you know, why isn't, given everything we just said about the environment that Harris is running in, why isn't Trump running away with it? Abortion's one answer, but Donald Trump's uh, behavior is clearly another part of this equation, as are his criminal convictions. These things um, we got so discounted a lot in the Republican primary, and they get discounted sometimes in our minds because it's like, but the whole Republican Party is still unified around him. But the total, and he's more popular than ever, all those things are true. But they are still weights around him because I think without them, mm -hmm. Donald Trump may be running away with them. Trump says things as a joke or sarcastically, and these brain dead people on CNN twist it into something else. Harris's latest campaign message, casting Trump as unstable and unhinged, may appeal to her base, but it's an old tactic that's lost some of its edge. Yes, CNN highlights how half of likely voters see Trump's rhetoric on going after enemies as a potential reason to vote against him. But let's face it, for many Americans, Trump's promise to drain the swamp is exactly what resonated back in 2016 and still rings true. People are tired of political elites looking out for themselves, and Trump's unfiltered approach is a direct affront to that establishment. David. Our final national poll of this 2024 race. And what does it show in this stable race? A tied race. Dead heat among likely voters, 47% Harris, 47% Trump. It obviously doesn't get closer to that. And I want to show you what this race has looked like over time. It has been remarkably stable. This goes all the way back to when Joe Biden was still running in August of last year. You saw it was a 47-46 race there. You see here the red line, the Donald Trump line. He's never been behind outside the margin of error, statistically trailing in this race the entire time that we have polled this race. Let's look at it by party ID here, Dana. You see overwhelmingly Democrats are with Harris, as you would expect. Uh, overwhelmingly down here, 92% uh, of Republicans are with Trump. Harris is getting about 7% of Republicans. I know she's making a big play for some of those Trump-resistant Republicans of late we've seen. And look at the independents. It's actually within the margin of error of that subgroup. So there's no real clear leader with independents, but numerically, Harris has this uh, slight higher number there. This dead heat isn't just a tie. It's a major warning signal for Democrats. If their base isn't mobilized, if key demographics are questioning Harris's ability to lead, and if everyday Americans feel financially and socially strained, this isn't the kind of environment where an incumbent administration has an easy path to victory. And we've been talking a lot about the gender gap in this race. Uh, it's a little smaller in our poll overall than we've seen in some other polling. But among likely voters, Harris is plus six, 50% to 44% with women. And Donald Trump is plus six, equally 51% uh, to 45% with men. That is a 12-point uh, gender gap. What this poll is telling us is some of the reasons why this race is so close in those battlegrounds as well. What is some of what you're learning behind those numbers? Right. So, you know, lots of people uh, on the Democratic side of the equation say, how could it be possible that it's tied? Why is Harris uh, not running away with this? Well, it's the environment that she's running in. We asked folks, uh, your financial situation over the past year, so today compared to a year now, a plurality, nearly half, 49%, say they are worse off today financially than they were a year ago. 35% say they're about the same. Only 16% say they're better off. I'll also just say 
We have Joe Biden at a low approval rating at 36 percent in this poll. Uh, we have the wrong track number. Seven out of 10 Americans say we're in the wrong uh, direction. Things aren't going well. It's a rough environment if you're running in the incumbent party. So nearly half the country, 49 percent, says they're worse off than they were a year ago. Think about that. Under this administration, Americans are feeling the squeeze more than ever, whether it's at the grocery store, the gas pump, or their utility bills. This isn't just some statistical blip. It's the real-life effect of democratic policies that have exacerbated inflation, destabilized energy costs, and weakened American households' purchasing power. And yet, Harris's campaign is zeroing in on issues like abortion and democracy, leaving economic and security issues by the wayside because they simply don't have a strong answer to them. What does that mean then? Why isn't Donald Trump running away with it if that's the environment? Well, here's one issue. Look at, Do look at Kamala Harris's domination. The issue of abortion and reproductive rights, she is running a 21-point margin ahead of Trump on trust to handle that issue. <laughs> uh, a little bit uh, protecting democracy is an advantageous category for her. Trump still doing his best on immigration. He's got a 16-point lead over Harris on the economy, a 13-point lead, and on foreign policy, a 10-point lead. But that abortion and reproductive rights number, that's one of the reasons Donald Trump is not yet running away with this race. And then who's left in this race, Dana? 89% of likely voters in this poll tell us their mind is made up. 9% say they could change their mind between now and casting their ballot, though I will say a large swath of these folks they're not extremely motivated to vote the way that the folks who already made up their mind are. And only 2% of voters at this point, likely voters, uh, say they have no first choice in this race, Dana. In six of the seven swing states, CNN's polling averages also show virtual ties. We haven't gotten enough quality polls out of Nevada to do an average there. And as of this morning, nearly 33 million Americans have already voted, including nearly 10 million in those seven states. The Harris campaign is pushing the idea that her stance on reproductive rights will turn out massive support. And sure, the overturn of Roe v. Wade was a shock to many, but even now, only 31% of Americans say a candidate's stance on abortion is the single most important issue to them. For most voters, it's one of several factors, not the deciding one. And the Democrats are banking on a playbook from the 2022 midterms, a different time a different context. With inflation and financial strain looming so large, Americans are prioritizing issues that impact their wallets and day-to-day -day lives. Um, I mean, these numbers are so interesting, particularly some of what you started to show us about um, the crosstabs. I mean, it is inside <laughs> politics. I can say crosstabs. The lingo. <laughs> yeah, I know, you know. We love the lingo here. <laughs> um, and and as we well, first of all, just your you know your takeaway, uh, your overall takeaway of what you just saw. I think this explains a lot about why Democrats are so nervous, right? Like Harris was supposed to rebuild this coalition from Obama uh, to to you know kind of wash away the the fears about Joe Biden, and you know she's not really sort of running running away with it in a way that. You know, there's concerns about black men voting. There's concerns about Arab Americans in, in Michigan. And it just means that at the very end, you're going to have Democrats and Republicans, but Democrats too, very nervous at the end. And yes, about the Obama coalition, because he won twice. But it looks like she has rebuilt uh, the coalition or brought the Democratic ticket back from where it was when Joe Biden was still at the top of the ticket, which was no small thing. Which was one of the only things that moved this race. Yeah, right? exactly. It was like that debate and him leaving the ticket. Otherwise, you're right, it's been absolutely stable. And even then... Then there's the elephant in the room, voter enthusiasm. The CNN poll reveals that a whopping 89% of likely voters have already made up their minds. The enthusiasm among Trump's base is intense. They're energized, they're ready, and they're unwavering in their support. Compare that to Harris's base, where there's hesitation and unease even among core Democratic voters. There's notable concern within Democratic circles about turnout from key demographics, including younger voters, black men, and even some Arab American communities in swing states like Michigan. Focus on some of the issues that pop in, in, this, uh, in this poll and clearly in the data that they have inside the campaign, um, abortion how abortion could affect uh, your vote. Candidate must share your views, 31%.
one of several factors, 50%, not a major issue, only 19%. It's got salience, and I have been talking to Harris advisors about this, uh, trying to press them if they think um, the abortion issue is as salient as it proved to be in the 2022 midterms, right on the heels of Roe versus Wade being overturned with the Dobbs decision. And the theory, their theory of the case is it is, and maybe even more so, mm -hmm. because they believe, and this is part of the stories that you hear Harris telling on mm -hmm. the trail, th their theory is, you know, back in 22, we saw in some states like New York with the Democratic governor, Kathy Hochul, or in Michigan uh, with the Democratic governor like Richard Whitmer, that perhaps some folks weren't, uh, some voters weren't thinking that abortion rights were really endangered because there were these Democratic uh, elected officials and legislatures. Recent polls indicate that the majority of Americans are less focused on abortion, while issues like the economy, foreign policy, and the border dominate their concerns. This presents a challenge for Vice President Kamala Harris, as the Biden-Harris administration has faced significant criticism on these key issues, with many viewing their handling as lacking or ineffective. Aware of this public sentiment, Harris often avoids delving into specifics when asked about the economy, foreign policy, or border security. Her responses tend to be vague, skirting around these critical subjects. Instead of addressing direct policy points, she frequently redirects focus to former President Trump, attributing current challenges to his administration's actions. This approach has led to further scrutiny, with critics pointing out that by not offering concrete answers, Harris risks losing the confidence of voters who are prioritizing these issues.